Hello friends, this video on the fundamental unit of life part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us look at the classification of organisms based on the number of cells. Now we broadly classify organisms, living organisms into two categories, unicellular organisms and multicellular organisms. Now this classification is based on the number of cells present in an organism. So when I say unicellular, from the name itself you can guess what is unicellular. Uni plus cellular. So uni means one. Cellular means cells. So that means organisms with one cell. Similarly here you have multicellular. So multi means many. So organisms with many cells are multicellular organisms. So let us try to understand unicellular organisms and multicellular organisms with the help of few examples. So what are unicellular organisms? One cell constitutes the organism. That means in the entire body of the organism, there is thing, just one cell. So that one cell alone constitutes the structure of the organism. The one cell alone constitutes the net function of the organism. So everything is dependent on just one cell, right? So in this case, single cell performs the basic functions that are characteristic of the organism. That means in this case, you don't have many cells. I mean, you don't have some cells to perform digestion, some cells to um, for ingestion, some cells for ejection. So you don't have those many cells. You just have one cell. So that single cell will perform all the basic functions required for the organism to survive. So you must be wondering what kind of organism is it which has just one cell, right? So let us look at some of the examples of unicellular organisms. So the best example that I can give you now is amoeba. So it is amoeba. Are you aware of the name amoeba? Many of you would have heard of the amoeba um, gaming place in most of the malls these days. You have amoeba game center, right? Where you have a variety of games. So now here, the, the amoeba which we are talking about, it is a microorganism. Right? Like when I think, when I talk of microorganism, the names which are familiar, which you are familiar with are uh, bacteria, fungi, right? These kind of names you are familiar with, bacteria, virus and all such things. So amoeba is also a microorganism. It is, it is in fact a shapeless microorganism and it, it falls under the category of protozoa. Now, I will not discuss in detail what is a protozoa, what is a bacteria, what is a virus now. For now, you should just know that all these are microorganisms which are extremely small and we cannot generally see them with our naked eye. Okay? So, in your higher classes, in class 11th, you will study about the animal family and the plant family in full detail. So, that time you will come to know the various properties, characteristics of each of these classes. Right? So for now, you should just know that amoeba is a unicellular organism which has just one cell. So this is how an amoeba looks like, right? So the entire body of the amoeba just has one cell. So this entire thing is one cell and this entire thing is an amoeba, right? So this amoeba is a shapeless, it doesn't have a fixed shape, microorganism which is a protozoa. Where do we generally found amoeba? It is generally found in marine regions where you have water or in, on the decaying bottom vegetation of freshwater lakes or ponds, right, where you have, de I mean, if you go to the lowermost level of water in a freshwater lake or a pond, what do you see? You see there will be so many plants and such things which are getting decayed. So there also you see amoeba. So it is mostly found in marine regions. Now here it has got a single cell and that cell decides the shape of the amoeba. So that cell changes its shape, the amoeba also changes its shape. So amoeba is an example of unicellular organism. So here the intake of food, the digestion of food, the excretion of food, all these functions has to be performed by the single cell. So the single cell is capable of performing the functions which are needed in due course of time. Right? Now let us look at let us look at the next example of unicellular organism that is Chlamydomonas. So the names are tough, right? So that, that's how it, it happens in biology. You need to memorize tough names. There is no other option. So it is Chlamydomonas. So please pronounce it correctly. It is Chlamydomonas. 
Domonas, right? So what is a Chlamydomonas? It is again a microorganism. It is a kind of green algae. What is an algae? So when I took of algae, you would have seen it in uh, marine bodies, right? You would have seen this green colored grass like structure which happens generally over the surface of water. You would have not only seen it in oceans and all, you would have seen it in ponds or small lakes and all nearby to your locality also. Where you have a layer of green grass like structure on the surface of water. Sometimes during the rainy season you have these kind of algae even on your walls or even on the floors. Sometimes you do have it because of damping, right? So the so Chlamydomonas are a kind of green algae and here you can see the Chlamydomonas. Now see here everything looks so big, the Chlamydomonas looks so big, the amoeba looks so big, but actually they are all microscopic organisms. But these pictures which are given here are the microscopic view. I mean when they are viewed through a microscope, this is how they look like. So Chlamydomonas is again another example of a unicellular organism. Now, when you actually look at the cell structure of the Chlamydomonas, it looks somewhat like this. So here, so this is single cell. So this is just one cell. This constitutes the entire body of the Chlamydomonas. So inside this cell, you have a nucleus. You, you remember in one of the previous slides, I told that there was a scientist named Robert Brown who discovered that there is a nucleus inside every cell, right? So this is how the cell of a Chlamydomonas looks like. So here I am not going to talk about the cell in detail because till now I have not discussed about the different parts of a cell. Once I do that then you will be able to understand this also. Right? So for now I, I will just go through the examples of unicellular organisms. The ne next example is a Paramecium. What is a Paramecium? It is again a kind of protozoa. So it, these are ciliate protozoa. What are ciliate protozoa? That means protozoa family with cilia. Cilia means these structures. If you see there are small hair like structures. So these hair like structures are known as cilia. So since these kind of protozoa have cilia over their bodies therefore they are known as ciliate protozoa. So paramecium falls under the category of ciliate protozoa. So where do we generally see paramecium? They are generally found in freshwater or marine environment or in stagnant, stagnant ponds or basins. So mostly if you see these kind of microorganisms are generally found in damped places, right? So they, as I said, they are covered with cilia, here like structures all over their body. They are also known as, paramecium is often known as slipper animal cube. So why are they known as slipper animal cube? Because of their appearance. So if you look at this picture, these are all paramecium. Now the paramecians look like a slipper, right? If you look at this, if I don't tell you that this is a paramecium, just by looking at the picture, you will get an impression of a slipper, right? So that is why they are also known as slipper animal cube. So in paramecium also, you just have one single cell and that single cell performs all the basic functions needed for the survival of the paramecium. The next unicellular organism is a bacteria, a name which is quite common to you. You would have often heard of bacterial infection or you would have often heard your mom asking you to wash your hands before you have your food because there might be some bacteria in your hand, right? So bacteria again is a, um, is a kind of microorganisms. They come in variety of shapes and sizes. So this bacteria was one amongst the very first life forms on earth. When life just started existing on earth, so bacteria was one of those first life forms on earth. So where do we generally found bacteria? They are generally found in soil, water or acidic hot springs. They also live in plants and animals. As I said, we often have bacterial infection, right? So bacterial infection means that particular organ is infected with bacteria. That means bacteria is residing in our body. Correct? That is how that object is getting infected. For example, you sometimes might have bacterial infection in your teeth. What does that mean? Bacteria is living in your teeth. So that is why it, it has bacterial infection. So many of times bacteria live in the body of plants or animals, right? So 
Here, if you look at this picture, this again shows the microscopic view of a bacteria. Now, in bacteria, as on the figure on the right hand side, you can see that there are so many different shapes of a bacteria. It can be spherical, it can be of a elongated shape, it can be oval like structure, or it can be a small structure with a tail. So, there, is, there are many different shapes and structures of bacteria. So, here it shows the microscopic view of a specific type of bacteria. How does it look like under a microscope? So, these were some of the examples of unicellular organisms where the organism is made up of just one cell and that single cell performs all the basic functions of that organism, right? So, with this we will end our discussion on unicellular organisms. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.